Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you books that I think will become modern classics. So some of these are ones that I've read and they're some of the most, you know, amazing books I've ever read. Either the writing was beautiful, the stories, just the impact of the stories. And then there's some that for me, I think stand the test of time and will be looked back upon, you know, 50, 60 years from now and just seeing the kind of the generational impact I think will be kind of well will be well versed and kind of I think will be enjoyed throughout the generations of humankind. So yeah without further ado let's get started. So this is the book that I think that is like for me this is a classic in my eyes just I feel like it is better than like Sherlock Holmes like those murder mysteries I feel like just the scope of this series is so much more than just a typical murder mystery and so this is again one that I think will stand the test of time and it is the Inspector Gamache series by Elise Penny you guys are probably sick and tired of me talking about this series but it is honestly amazing like I cannot express how much I love this series I do have a video that I'll link up in the cards where I kind of discuss why I love this series and why it's so impactful but again like I was talking about I think not only is this kind of a murder mystery that strays away from a lot of the formulaic um, crime series that have been out and well established for many years these you know murder mysteries are very complex and very <laughs> unique and well thought out but I think where this book really stands out is the development of characters throughout the series and the themes between good versus evil white versus dark like all those things I think it explores some very interesting themes about just the human experience and you know just kind of growing with the times and sense of found family like I think there's so many universal themes in here that so many people can relate to relate to even though this takes place in this quaint small town in Quebec like I can relate to it in you know like, I feel like anyone can relate to this series no matter where they live in the world. I think the themes are just so universal and they do speak to the human experience and you know what you know what are the important things in life and I think it does a really good job at integrating that within a murder mystery. So again I cannot praise this series enough. This is one that I think will be a classic at least for me when I look back on my life you know 50 60 years from now like I feel like this will always be a series that will stand you know will be with me forever. Next up this is a book that I think is not only beautifully written but it is also very haunting as well and it is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. I read this several years ago and it is a book that still haunts me to this day and I think it also you know plays a lot it kind of looks into a lot of important themes as well relating to rape culture in particular. I haven't read a lot of fictionalized books that Kind of discuss this and I think the way the book goes about um, the author goes about handling these topics I think was very appropriate and you do get very upset in here because I feel like it's a realistic portrait of what kind of goes on and so this takes a place in a small town in Sweden where the town's you know shining glory is its junior hockey team and once they end up making it to finals like the final championship game kind of a couple days before that the star player ends up raping the general man manager's daughter and it leaves the town divided and I think just the way this is written I like I feel like the narration style like I don't know how to articulate it but it feels like you are kind of like the spirit of the town kind of floating through the like the winds kind of following these people and there are different you know the webs that they cross and just the interconnectedness of these stories and just seeing how this one event leaves the town so divided I think was very interesting to explore and again it's one that makes you mad too because it is what you know kind of rape culture is like and I think this is just a really beautifully written story I think it's the writing is very lyrical it's poetic and it is definitely one that I think is very haunting as well. So this one's kind of cheating because I feel like this book is so critically 
praise that it is just automatically going to be a kind of modern classic and it is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I read this when it first came out and I remember just being blowing, blown away by the writing in here. Like I think this one won the Pulitzer. Um, like that's how you know like it is a well-written book and so this takes place during World War II. We follow two different perspectives. We follow the perspective of this young girl living in France and eventually her experience with the Nazi occupation during World War II and she one of her um, kind of experiences is that she is also blind as well and then we also follow the perspective of this orphan who grows up in Hitler's youth and eventually how these two people that are kind of worlds apart their stories of eventually intertwine and I think this book again is something where the writing in here is just amazing and I think I don't think I've ever read a book that was that has been written like this and I feel like again like I feel like I'm kind of cheating with this because this book is critically it's received like it is already won like a lot of awards so I'm kind of cheating with this but again I think this is a book that everyone needs to read at least once in their lifetime and I feel like this would be even a good book for schools to integrate into the curriculum. I feel like students would be engaged and want to read this book because yes it is well written and you can pull a lot of things that can be studied in here but I think it's also a story that is very engaging as well. So next up I have The Secret Keeper by Kate Morton. This is a World War II historical fiction novel so this book kind of opens up with this girl when she's younger and she witnesses her mother murder a man on her door on their doorstep in cold blood and that is something that she spent the last 50 years not discussing at all but when her mother is on her deathbed and kind of in kind of some dementia is going on these events are eventually brought up and so the daughter tries to kind of just figure out like what happened and so it kind of ties in with this woman's story kind of growing up and living in London during the Blitz and it kind of goes off from there but again this is a book that I think is one that is cr incredibly well written but I think where it really st like st stands out is the integration between the present day storyline and the one that takes place during World War II and how the author is able to kind of bring you along with the character, the daughter, who's trying to investigate and learn about her mother's past and you aren't told this, you're experiencing it with the character which I think is a lot of fun and I think it is really unique. Um, so yeah, I think this is a book, again, that everyone, I think, needs to read once. It is, like, I was blown away. I remember just reading this outside in the summertime on our deck and just being blown away. And I've just been gripped with her works since. And I think this is one of her standout books as well. Um, it's just a really interesting and thought-provoking read. And again, I think just Kate Morton, several of Kate Morton's books, I think, will be, you know, stand the test of time and still be very, you know, popular and meaningful and impactful several years from now. And lastly, I have The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. And again, with All the Light We Cannot See, this is again a book that has received a lot of critical praise. It is very well loved and well, uh, well received and reviewed book. But I think there is something really impactful. I think not only is this book kind of really revitalized historical fiction, but I think it also revitalized historical fiction specifically focusing on women's stories. I think up until this point there are very few books that I read during World War II that really focused on what women were experiencing during this time and I think again I feel like this book was really the launch pad for a lot of books that have come out since that really have focused on you know women's stories and I think that's really impactful and again this book is really impactful as well in terms of the story in here we follow two sisters and their different experiences living in Nazi occupied France during World War II we follow one sister who's forced to open her home to a Nazi official in her experience with kind of living with that and then the other sister who becomes involved in the rebellion and kind of 
underground stuff is their um, underground you know network and I think again this only like I feel like where Kristen Hanna books are gonna be very impactful throughout you know I think the rest of humanity because of their ability to kind of really showcase the human experience and again Kristen Hanna does focus on women's stories as well which I think is really important I feel like especially with a lot of you know media like tv shows movies like novels a lot of them especially ones that are centered around war really focus on men and I think there's really something you know important to you know share and talk about with the you know women's stories and I think that is what makes this really impactful. Not only is this story something that is heartbreaking and it is beautifully written and just how you're able to kind of lead yourself in this novel, but her ability to tie in so much of the human experience with these two narratives and how you can see there's parts in here that I think like everyone can relate to in terms of, you know, sibling dynamics and, you know, just different emotions that we've experienced, even though we aren't necessarily living in this time. A lot of the themes and experiences and what, like what people went through is very similar. And I think this book really kind of kick-started that and kind of you know showing you know the amazing women's stories throughout history and so I think this book again will be one of those that when we look back and we see like these trends throughout literature I think this one in particular will kind of be known for revitalizing women's stories in historical fiction. So that's it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what modern books do you think are going to become classics in the future. I think this is really interesting to see because if you look at classics, you know, from, you know, the 1800s, like even earlier, like I think it's interesting to see how literature has kind of shifted throughout history so I think it'll be interesting you know 50 years from now to look back on books that we've read and see which ones have had that impact on culture and humans in general um, but yeah I hope you guys kind of enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time bye guys <laughs>